Hi, my name is Philippa Brown. I'm the writer of Holy Hands, a handbook for intercessors. We're doing right now a series of summaries of each chapter, and we have already completed the, the foreword and the introduction, and also first chapter, Pray and Pray Again. So today we are going in a, a little bit deeper, and we are going to speak a little bit about uh, communion. Uh, it's chapter two, the summary is on chapter two, which uh, is titled The Veils. And it speaks about overcoming mind blindness and entering into the freedom of the spirit. I must say I am under authority, of that of my husband Andre and my pastor Raymond Grant. I'm also under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, my King. Amen. So we are going to deal with spiritual blockages that hinder or sight, clarity, and perception as we try to engage God in the spirit and get to a place of connection and communication. Why don't we pray right now? Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, that Jesus, you are with us. And uh, it makes all the difference in the world to know, Father, that uh, you are here and that it is your desire to draw your people close to you. It's your desire to keep us close. Hallelujah. Amen. And Father, today you are sending out a challenge, uh, a, an invite, an invitation, Father, to have us come and not only visit with you as you desire to visit with us, but you desire to dwell, to shakan, to tabernacle with us. And we dwell with you in that high and holy place. We are grateful today for such an invitation. None of us deserve it, but you desire it. So we give you glory today, Father, and we are asking, Lord, that every heart be open to what you are saying to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. So we are uh, grateful today to the Lord for his word. And uh, we're going to take a quick look at Exodus chapter 34. I am not going to read it. I'll just uh, summarize the parts quickly that we are going to talk about. There's also a very good reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where the Apostle Paul refers to the occasion in Exodus 34. And this is when, after Moses descends from the mountain, after spending 40 days with the Lord on the mountain, and uh, when he came back, the Bible says his face glowed, that they could not look at him. The people couldn't stare at him. In fact, they ran away from him. And so because of that, he had to put a veil over his face, that is, a covering uh, over his face. He only took that off when he went in to talk to God. But as long as he was facing the people, he had a veil over his face. Uh, the Apostle Paul discusses this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And as I said before, it's a beautiful reading. So you want to um, maybe read the entire passage because it does give uh, significant clarity to uh, what we're going to talk about today. So, so he states that it is because the people's minds were blinded. Because a spiritual veil was over their hearts that they could have, they had no apprehension, no, no perception or, or connection or appreciation for God's glory that was present right in their midst. They didn't understand it and they actually ran away from it. Now this morning, uh, the Lord had me read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. And I'm going to read uh, a few verses, just selected uh, verses from it. And uh, we'll uh, move on after that. Now, it is the situation where the Lord has called the children of Israel to come and to talk with him. And he instructs Moses to have the people get ready, be prepared. He said, sanctify them and uh, have them wash their clothes. Nobody come at your wives. He had them ready for three days before this encounter. He wanted to draw his people to himself, right? And uh, Moses here in the book of Deuteronomy is rehearsing what had happened, right? And he says to the children of Israel, he said in verse 22 of chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, These words spake the Lord 
after these words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount, out of the midst of a fire, of the cloud, and of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them in two tables of stone, and delivered them to me. And so we're going to jump over to verse 24. And uh, when the elders now, they came to Moses, and they said this. They said, And you said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us his glory and his greatness. Pay attention to the word glory right there. And we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man, and he liveth. So this was a really astounding uh, occurrence right here, that God is talking to over a million people at once. And these people realized it was God, but they were absolutely terrified. To the point where they said, if we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, then we shall die. So they were terrified. They were afraid that they would die. And they said to Moses, you go near him and you listen to everything he has to say. And then you come back and you tell us what he said. And we will do everything you say, but we don't want to hear him anymore. Because if we hear him anymore, we are going to die. And so, uh, strangely, the Lord agreed with the people when Moses said, this is what they're saying. The Lord said, they're absolutely right. And look at verse uh, 28. The Lord says, they have well spoken all that they have said. That means they are right. If they hear me anymore, they will die. Isn't that strange? God calls his people to talk to them. And then they realize if he talks to them anymore, they would die. Why? In verse 29, this is a, a, just an amazing verse here because it is evident that the Lord is lamenting the fact that the people could not stay and have conversation with him. And this is what he says. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. This is one of the very few chapters in the Bible that ends with an exclamation mark. And here is God saying, Oh, that there was such a heart in my people that I could keep them close, talk with them, and there would be no adverse reactions. They wouldn't die. What was the problem? The problem was the heart of the people. And that is what the Lord addressed. He said, oh, that there was such a heart in them. Because that there is exactly the problem that creates spiritual blockages between God and his people, and these things hinder our sight or clarity or perception and becomes a veil. And we become blinded where we cannot perceive the glory of God. We cannot fellowship in the presence of God in the most holy place where he desires us now to move from praying in the outer court to praying in the holy of holies. Remember, with when Jesus died on the cross, the minute he died and said, it is finished, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom, ripped open, indicating God's desire and the fact that he has given now all of his access into that place where only the high priest alone and once a year could go. But when Jesus entered, now he made way that we could all enter. We're all invited into the, the Holy of Holies. In our prayers today, what we're discussing, because we're talking about prayer, is that we want to move from praying in the outer court. We want to move into praying in the Holy of Holies, where we actually are encountering the presence of God. 
Listen what the Lord says to Moses in verse 31. He said, as for you, that's Moses, stand thou here by me and I will speak unto you. Imagine this. God has called over a million people to talk with him. And when it boils down, he can speak to only one. No wonder the Lord lamented. And this morning, honestly, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me when the Lord gave me this word and I just wept. Because I could understand a little bit of God's desire, his earnest desire for his people to be near. And how he grieves when instead of coming close, we run away from his presence. Why do we do that? They ran away because their hearts were not right. Some of us, we don't run. But we still, when we go to pray, we're kind of groping around blindly, looking for an answer, trying to connect with God in a way that makes us sure that he hears us, that he's responding, almost desperate sometimes for an answer from God. What forms these barriers in our hearts that causes us to still remain in the outer court when we have been given full access to the Holy of Holies? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, for they are spiritual, de spiritually discerned. And discerned means to see or to become aware of something, right? Our flesh opposes or resists the Spirit of the Lord. And it's constantly at war with God. And we can read that in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 17, in Romans 8 verse 7, and in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, where our natural desires, aff affections, and uh, uh, or just her, our natural man, our flesh, the Bible calls it our flesh, oppose or resists God. And if in our hearts we entertain certain things, it will effectively block us from True communion with the Lord. I'm going to list the book, lists a few of these things. And I'm going to just uh, 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 give you a few of them right now. The first one is unbelief. Doubt. And then unforgiveness, logic, reason, pride. It's a big one. Skepticism, resentment, misconceptions, uh, religiosity, past experiences. Uh, false ideas, anything that generates from a, a, a fleshly mindset will effectively become a barrier and block us from true communion with God. Well, the Lord is calling his people today very clearly. And uh, if this, what I'm saying, resonates with you, then it is evident that you are being called into communion into that deeper place, into a place of constant connection with God. The Lord says a pretty amazing thing, and I'm going to find it in the book of Isaiah, chapter 57. And uh, when I read it, uh, it kind of blew me away. In verse 15, the Bible says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Like, even this is so uh, difficult for, for us to grasp the majesty and the sovereignty and the awesomeness of God. But he says, I dwell or I shekan. That, that word dwell means shekan, and that's where we get the word shekinah from, that referred to the glory of God present in the earth that the people could visibly see, that, that uh, 
reddish gold radiance is referred to as the Shekinah. And uh, so he said, I dwell or Shekin in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isn't that amazing? So we see that when we turn to the Lord, and this is what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he said in order to get rid of these veils, we have to turn to the Lord. He was referring exactly to Israel. He said, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Same thing for us. When we turn to the Lord, and what is that turning to the Lord? It is described in the book of Joel chapter 2, where the Lord says, Turn to me with all your heart and with weeping and with mourning, with fasting, and rend your hearts and not your garments. So this is a place where it is not a casual seeking. It is a flat out lay everything down on my face before God crucifying the flesh with its affections and lust. When we do that, the Bible promises that the veils will be removed. We enter now into a place of true communion with God and we dwell or shakan with God, like what the Lord said, the Lord shakan. We dwell with him in that high and holy place because we live in a perpetual posture of humility and repentance. This is what Daniel did in the book of Daniel chapter, I think it was chapter 9, yes, verses 3 to 23. The Bible says that Daniel repented in fasting, in sackcloth and ashes, in prayer and supplications, making confession and praying to God. When he did that, I'm not saying to get sackcloth and ashes, but you could get some sackcloth. Some people use burlap and just lay out before the Lord. Begin to lay everything down. Sometimes it literally means, it calls for us to lay down prostrate before the Lord and say, Lord, I lay me down. I lay down myself, my thoughts, my desires, my aspirations, my ambitions, my will, my very life. I lay down. And the Lord promises that when we humble ourselves like that, we will dwell in the Holy of Holies with him. So he says to Moses, everybody else has to go back home. But you can stand by me and hear everything I am saying. Happened again with Daniel that I mentioned before. Because when Daniel returned to the Lord, turned to the Lord, not returned, turned to the Lord, in this fashion that we just mentioned, what happens? The veils are gone. Gabriel shows up. And Gabriel says, I am come in response to your prayer. Isn't that amazing? The veils vanish. So I encourage you today, pray. Pray until the veils vanish. Lay down everything before God. Count nothing too precious to not lay at his feet. Too precious to lay at his feet. Nothing is too precious to lay at his feet. This morning, he spoke while, while I was praying. And just put his finger on something that keeps us out of that holy of holies prayer. And it was our preferences, as simple as it seemed. I was honestly a little bit shocked. He said, preferences, yep, our likes and dislikes. You know, we like to go out with our friends and we like to, you know, do what we want to do. We like to eat what we want to eat. And sometimes the Lord will say, okay, not today. Fast. Well, you know, I would rather eat today 
you know, I, I prefer to go have a little hangout with my friends right now. And the Lord said, no, you need to be in prayer. You need to be in intercession for, for, for something. Our preferences are not very easy to lay down. I realized that while I was praying. It's like, how can I say I will give up everything to the point that whatever I want to do today or whatever I plan to do today, I bring everything I lay at his feet and I say, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. When we do that, we enter that place of connection and communication. There's no other place like it. It is literally, it's heaven on earth. Because in Psalm 91, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We live in the very presence of God. And that is what God wants. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Stay up, we up. Flow smooth like a layup. Let me ride my day ones. Skr, skr. Fakes, I don't have none. Nada. Look at what God done. Oh. Got so much love, set down his son. Never different.